I want to answer this one question as I've been asked a lot about it because lately I've been also talking quite a bit about dark data. Now the question that I've been asked a few times is what are the risks of having dark data? I mean we have it pretty much every organization and any organization has it. But what are the risks of holding on to it if you're not using this data? So here are the four main risks of having dark data. The first one that's fairly obvious is those are the legal and regulatory risks. Over the past few years, one could say that there has been quite a data deluge, an abundance of data. No, I'm not referring to deluge, where like Seinfeld said, one holds on to their dear life. Okay, I can't make a really good Seinfeld impression. Though navigating the data lakes can sometimes feel like that, like you're holding on to your dear life. Okay, let's go back to our dark data conversation. As a result of this data abundance that we're all encountering, companies often don't know where all the sensitive data is stored and can be confident that they are actually complying with consumer data protection measures like GDPR. I am not a GDPR expert, by the way, but from my understanding with GDPR, personal data can only be gathered legally under strict conditions for a legitimate purpose. That means that storing data just in case isn't a legally viable option anymore. Businesses really need to show how they are using and protecting their customers' data in order to avoid hefty fines. But this is just talking about GDPR. As another example, if part of this dark data is covered by legal regulations such as the credit card data. Exposure of such data could throw companies into financial and legal liabilities. According to a survey from the digital security company Gemalto, 46% of executives believe their companies do not know where all the sensitive or private information is stored. <sighs> Lack of clarity on where data is stored makes it difficult to safeguard sensitive information. And considering the cost of dealing with data breaches and associated governmental penalties, dark data can be very expensive. As another example, on May 3rd, 2018, Twitter announced a bug where user passwords were stored unmasked in internal logs, unbeknownst to Twitter administrators. And that's maybe one of the worst case of dark data gone wrong. But while Twitter doesn't think anyone outside of Twitter was able to access the data, it's still a big deal. It was a big deal. It still is. Storing users' passwords in logs is a terrible practice and it could have been avoided with better dark data policies. So legal and regulatory requirements are a risk and they are a risk for data in general. But why undertake it for something that you are storing but you are not using nor plan on using? And that's kind of what dark data is. And by the way, if you're interested in finding out more about dark data, please check out this video on what is dark data. The second risk for having dark data is the reputational loss. And yes, this goes hand in hand with that first risk. I mean, companies are viewed as custodians of data they collect. So any loss of data, especially sensitive and confidential data, can result in a loss of reputation. You know, just a year ago, 2019, Hyper, an apparently trusted marketing partner of Facebook and Instagram, has been secretly collecting and storing location and other data on millions of users against the policies of the social media networks. They basically took countless Instagram stories that were supposed to disappear after 24 hours and effectively made them permanently by storing them in a database and then renting it out to brands. So I'm sure their reputation suffered quite a little bit after this news got out. Now the third risk of having dark data is incurring the storage and management costs. Storage nowadays is fairly inexpensive, right? I mean, true, but it could also add up to some big figures. The global cost of dark data is expected to reach 3.3 trillion US dollars this year in 2020 if it hasn't already. That's more than 2% of the world's 
gross domestic product, GDP. That's a lot of money. Veritas estimates that it costs the average mid-sized organization, which is holding about um, 1,000 terabytes, I think they were mentioning. 1,000, yeah, 1,000 terabytes of data, more than $650,000 annually to store non-critical information. Probably that amount has dropped a little bit as the storage is becoming a bit less expensive, but even so, it would still be a vast amount of money to spend storing something that you don't even use. And beyond the actual cost of storage, the management of dark data also eats up valuable resources. All electronically stored data is vulnerable to legal discovery if potential litigation emerges. I mean, how much time and energy, resources, will it take to pull customer conversations out of storage? So pruning dark data can reduce storage maintenance costs and management costs really saving your business thousands of dollars each year. The last risk of having dark data talks to another cost, and that's the opportunity cost. If a company decides not to invest in the analysis and the processing of dark data, but its competitors do, then its competitors are more likely to kind of just inch ahead in the competition because they are taking advantage of that dark data, because they are making use of the insights from dark data. So that is really the cost that the company is paying because of lost opportunities. Please let me know what you think about this. Do you have any dark data retention policies in place? If so, would you be able to share them with this community? I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if so, please click the like button and also the subscribe and bell buttons to stay in touch with my latest videos. I do publish every week. Thank you.